Hi everyone, I hope you are all well and welcome to the seventh episode of Hey It Gets Better. I can't believe we're on the seventh episode already and I have a great episode in store for you today when I talk to Tom Lanslow. So Tom works at a startup called Butternut Box, but we talk about his own startup which he started and unfortunately things didn't work out. We talk about the sacrifices that occurred in Tom's life when he had his startup, from having little to no money because he invested it all back in the business to living with his parents. Tom gives some great advice all about job hunting and finding your priorities. So I definitely recommend listening to this one and I hope you enjoy it. Hi Tom, thank you for joining me today on Hey It Gets Better. How are you? Not at all, yeah. No, we're happy, happy to be here. Uh, really looking forward to chat. Fantastic. So if you just want to take a second to introduce yourself to everyone, just say a bit about who you are. Sure, yeah. So I'm Tom uh, and I work at the, the dog food and uh, technology startup Button Up Box. Uh, so, so yeah, in essence, we, we sell a different type of, of dog food. It's, um, it's fresh dog food uh, and uh, we sell it uh, personalised to your dog. So you kind of tell us uh, your dog's breed, your activity levels, uh, treats and whatnot. Um, and, and yeah, and we'd sell it uh, on subscription uh, delivered to your door. Um, and yeah, so the role, the role I have there at the moment is uh, I, so I lead on uh, all the different things we can do to, uh, to improve our proposition for customers. Um, so, uh, so essentially trying to, to encourage them to, to want to stay with us for longer um, and, uh, and also thinking about what new products uh, we could do to keep them interested along the way as well, which is always exciting. Yeah, that's brilliant. I always wanted to ask when I see someone working at one of these places, I would just always am really curious, do you have a dog? Uh, so interestingly, no. So I, I think I'm uh, probably one of about two people who who's probably you know, never actually had a family dog either. And, and I, I, yeah, I, I think it'd be interesting if you spoke to, to my colleagues at the moment, but I probably wangled it a little bit in, in the interviews in, in that, you know, I probably over the experience I had with, with dogs and um, and obviously managed to get through the door, uh, which, is, which is great. But, but no, my, my experience here is pretty limited. Well, um, so I'm just going to start off with the questions, um, as I do with every episode. So we'd just like to talk really about kind of how you got to where you are now and what sort of challenges or difficult decisions did you have to make really to get to where you are today? Because everyone has to make them. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. And, uh, and I think it's a good one to you know, for, for everyone to, to have to think about answering too. And I suppose when, when I look back on what is obviously a relatively short career so far, um, it definitely feels like it, it's taken me in, in a lot of directions. Um, and, and that's something that I feel very lucky uh, to, uh, to have been able to do, to, to have been able to try lots of different roles, different, different industries, uh, and kind of working with lots of different people too. And, but, but kind of when I look back at where it all really started, I think um, one of the things that sticks out in, in my head was, uh, was a specific decision that I made quite, quite early on in, in my career. Um, and, uh, and essentially that was uh, where just shortly after university or kind of as I was nearing the end of university, I, I just like many other um, kind of economic students, so that was what I, what I studied, um, I was absolutely convinced, kind of dead sir, convinced that I wanted to work in uh, banking or consulting. Um, so those were those were really the only two options that, that you were uh, told about. Um, everyone else that I uh, studied with was talking about, oh, you know, are you going to be a banker? Are you going to be a consultant? Uh, and all the different careers uh, talks that, that came in as well. They, that, that's obviously what, what they focused on. Um, so, so I ended up, for, for whatever reason, um, kind of stumbling through a, different, a, a few different uh, internships. Um, so, so weirdly, actually, I, uh, I remember it kicked off when I was sat in a lecture. It must have been kind of second year or, or something like that. And, and a few of my friends around me were, were talking about uh, the spring weeks that they were either interviewing for or, or applying for. And, uh, and in case you're kind of not aware of what a spring week is, it's, it's kind of like a, a, mini, a mini week long or two week long internship. Um, and I'd obviously not heard of this term before. And I thought, well, well if everyone else is, is looking at that, that's clearly something that I'm supposed to be doing as well. I, I definitely felt like I, I was missing a trick there. Um, so, so I that day ended up going home and, uh, and scrambling to see what spring weeks was still, was still open. Uh, and, and I found one, uh, essentially. And uh, for whatever reason, was really, really lucky to have blagged my way through uh, an assessment centre uh, and, and ultimately was offered the, the, the place. Um, and that really was the start of me fumbling through uh this this kind of very very early career in in, in banking i say career kind of a, a, a succession of different internships um before really ever thinking about 
whether that's something I actually wanted to to do. Um, and it was only when I, um, so kind of long story short, uh, before uh, the, the final internship I had, I'd, I'd spent a, a year working in Paris. And, and during that time, I'd, I'd actually founded a translation uh, startup with uh, with a couple of, uh, or one person that I met out there and, and someone I, that I know and have worked with a lot since. Um, and so, so yeah, so that led me to uh, obviously launching this uh, this startup. Um, and uh, when I was ultimately offered this uh, graduate role, uh, for, again for whatever reason it was, um, I was confronted with this th- with this decision: kind of do I do I take um, on the on the kind of the first side? Uh, do I take this really stable uh, job um, w- that was to be honest pr- pretty highly paid as well? I think. Um, some some of the salaries you can get for for roles like that are, are kind of way higher than perhaps they they should be. Pretty, pretty inflated in, in my view, um, and and obviously the thing that I've been spending a lot of kind of years working towards as well. Um, and then on the other side, I thought, well, do you know what? I, I've spent a, a bit of time exploring this startup. We've had a little bit of traction along the way, um, and and that option was was ultimately in, incredibly unstable. Um, the pay was less than zero um we, we definitely invested everything that we we had into the business and and probably more than anything i, I had absolutely no idea what i was doing and, and i think that was uh, that was probably the thing that, that in the end actually made me, me made me choose to do it i i definitely wanted that that learning experience um so yeah that, i think that was the big challenge or, or difficult decision for me and and to be honest with you it's it's been the absolute best decision i've ever made of, of taking that role at uh, uh, you know my, my own startup essentially and, and turning down uh, this well-paid job and and if anything I actually felt quite a lot of relief after doing that as opposed to um I suppose the regret that I probably assumed that I would feel yeah I think it's one of those things where you don't want to regret anything in your life and you don't really realize sort of because um, when you, you know, when you graduate, you are really young still. Yeah. You might feel like you're on top of the world and you're in charge of everything, but you've still got plenty of time to go for those other jobs. And it does feel like the career you pick was, that was it, was the be all and end all, but it, it really isn't. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And, and I think um, the, the, uh, the space for, for graduate careers is, is very, very different to, to what it used to be, let's say, kind of 10 years ago. And I think um, it's so much more common and there's so much less stigma around um, just moving until you find something that you absolutely love. Um, and dur- during my banking internships, I thought, well, this is, you know, this is it. This is what I wanted to do. Um, and it was only when I was really shown a few different options um, that I thought, actually, no, I, I didn't want to do that. And and I think there were a few times or a few moments in that in that internship that really kind of struck home to say, you know, this is not what you're doing, or what, not what you want to be doing. Like, Think, think about it before before spending another two years doing this and, and then waking up and again realizing that it's not what you wanted to do yeah I think there's definitely something as well in you know making that decision especially when like you said you were sort of educated to become um, a banker or a consultant and that was like what we kind of was drilled into you it does take some real guts to trust yourself trust yourself yeah, and I, th- I think you're absolutely right. And I think there are lots of um, barriers to, or well, lots of things that, that will make that decision a lot harder. And, and I think one of them is, um, is is feeling like your your career needs to be shaped by what your peers are doing and people that are in similar positions to you. And that was definitely something that, that really dragged um, on, on my mind for a bit. And, and I looked at all these incredibly smart um economists that that were were managing to find their feet in these incredibly you know well-paid and prestigious roles um and we're also really excited about it and and i think for a lot of for a long for a long time i felt that kind of i should be excited about that as well and and what am i missing like did did i not get the right team did i not get the right manager um but but ultimately when you when you take a a decision that is is very very different to what what everyone else is doing you, you stop comparing yourself to what you think is is the norm um, and you start kind of resetting in terms of the the things that you, your expectations on enjoyment, expectations on learning, um, and I think that's that's a really healthy position to to be aiming for. Totally, I couldn't agree with you anymore. And then, so you've start, so you started your startup, and how did that actually go then? Um, yeah, so so I started a company uh, called London Accent, and uh, I cannot even put into words um, how many mistakes we made along the way. And, and to be honest, how unprepared I was uh, for this life-changing decision. 
Um, and, uh, and and to be honest with you, I, the, the thing that stuck out in my head more than anything else, and uh, and I wonder, I often wonder if this is something that, that other kind of young startup founders find. Um, but but I, I remember distinctly that, you know, all these other founders and these podcasts I listen to or books that I read, that they spend a lot of time talking about failures um, uh, and kind of to, to, to expect failures. And, and they would glorify their mistakes, this whole mantra of kind of fail fast fail often uh, it's, it's very very well known kind of everyone knows to expect that when they're launching a business um and, uh, and and i think i was kind of well aware that that was going to happen but but i, I what i found was that that what founders and uh, and, and the kind of books that you can read what they didn't really prepare you for was was actually the reality of the impact um that, that you know coming uh, f- founding a new company can have on, on your quality of life as opposed to you know the actual lessons that you learn for um uh, for, for for actually turning your startup into something successful, uh, and and I think what what I guess uh, that that meant for me or any, anyway is um, quickly realised that that every founder has has a very different experience right to la- when they're launching a startup. So for some of them, it's perhaps second time, third time um, that they've launched one. They've had you know different levels of experience. Uh, they've got different uh, support bubbles around them. Uh, but but for me, um, being a founder, the, the first thing it meant was kind of leaving uni uh, and moving in with my parents, uh, which um, obviously meant no very kind of few freedoms compared to what I was, what I was before. And it, it seems too weird to think that, that I was, you know, I was running my own business, but at the same time having to almost report to my parents when, when I'm going out for, um, for a few drinks with a few friends. Uh, so that was one thing that I definitely wasn't prepared for. Um, and I think the other thing was, you know, it's the, it's the not having any money. Um, everything, again, like I said, was, was reinvested. Uh, I ended up spending a lot of time working weekends uh, just to pay for the different work travel that, that we needed to, 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 to run the business. Um, and it can quite quickly feel uh, quite quite lonely, um, despite you know me being pretty lucky to, to have a few people around me that I can speak to and, and, found, and you know launching that business with two others as well. Um, so, so there was definitely that impact on, on my life that I just did not anticipate. Um, and, and I guess that the second thing was, uh, I was absolutely shocked by how little I knew. And I know you kind of touched on this a bit earlier about um, kind of when you're younger, just thinking you just know stuff. Um, I definitely was in that position where I just thought I knew stuff. Uh, and, and one memory that sticks out for me, and I still talk about it. So I, I live with uh, one of my co-founders of that business at the moment. And, and we often think back to this one moment uh, where we were sat in um, uh, a, what we could kind of say is a co-working space, essentially someone uh, who run a business, let us use uh, some desk space for uh, for whenever we wanted, really. And I remember speaking to one of their marketing people and I said, kind of, what, so what actually is marketing? And like, what are you supposed to to do? What do you say to people? What are the different, you know, ways that you market? And and that was probably about, I don't know, six months into this business and um, and definitely had our website created and, and things like that. And yeah, I didn't really know what, what marketing was. And, and that feels so basic right now. Um, but but yeah, I just was wholly unprepared for for that entire experience. I think it's so good how honest you are about it as well. I definitely agree with the whole living back with your parents after uni because that's the exact boat I found myself in. And I think a lot of people now, especially with the recession, are going to find that they might have to move back home with their parents. And it definitely is a massive change. <laughs> Absolutely. And so, how, and how did you did you find that? Was that was that a shock for you? I think I always knew I was going to have to move back home because I live in London, so I can't afford to like live anywhere else. <laughs> um, but it definitely takes a while to get used to. I share a room as well with my 16-year-old sister. And I just, you know, definitely takes a really long time to get used to. And I also love how you were really honest as well about, you know, not having enough money and having to work really hard because I think there is always that cost to where you invest in yourself um I've done it with hey it gets better I spent quite a fair bit of money on it but at the same time you have to kind of hold out for the long game and how did you, you know keep yourself motivated during those moments where you know you were feeling maybe a bit lonely you didn't have enough money to go out or, um what would you say you know you did as a coping mechanism really yeah it's, it's a good question so so, so firstly on on the kind of the money question I, I think that's that's a really really important one and and kind of you investing some money and obviously a lot of time in, in creating a podcast 
um, is, uh, is is obviously really really unique, um, and and that is should should definitely be more more the norm uh, to, to what it is at the moment. I think there's there's this really strange uh, kind of mental block for lots of people, and, and I've definitely found this in the past too, where um, people are super reluctant to to put money towards even if it's a really small proportion of their their, their income or, or you know the, the amount of money that they that they've saved. Um, towards things that will better themselves, right? Um, yeah. So quick to, to put money towards, you know, the latest gadget or the latest, or just going out with a few friends and, and having a drink. And I, I'm sure there are, I feel like I'm sounding like a, you know, a <laughs> person right now, but but I think when when I when I learned that and I kind of realised that and and needing to, to spend both time and money on the different things that are going to help to better yourself in the future, that just completely changed, firstly, the, the way that I that I think about money um, and, and I think with that, it was, yeah, I think the big thing for me is just to, to trying to get good at managing your money, right? So irrespective of how much money you have. Um, so knowing what your, your minimum threshold is, knowing how low you can go, knowing what all your different expenditures are, um, either their business expenditures or just wanting to go out, like how, how low can you, can you go really? Um, and, and then once you're aware of, you know, your financial constraints, um, the, the question that you asked around kind of what what stops you from you know from getting really stressed out or what keeps you motivated it's once you're once you're clear of what your boundaries are um the freedom to 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 move around and play within those boundaries is is really kind of uplifting right so once you you say right i know what uh i know what i need to uh to 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 earn to be able to uh you know take this decision in my life and once you're confident you're able to stay within that boundary um the the options or the uh, the choices that you make are suddenly uh, you know so so much broader um and and the stresses that you end up you know, taking on are, are, are a lot less because you're you know financially you, you're going to be okay obviously you're not going to have a high salary and, and that's something for, for you know for everyone to, to think hardly about before launching a business it's it's likely that you're not going to you know start rolling in the, in the cash um two weeks in uh but but yeah i think it's just being really conscious of um of uh you know the boundaries that you have i don't know if that quite answers your question but, but that was definitely something i learned quite early on in the process no i think it really does and it sort of stresses a little bit about the importance of actually learning about money and how to spend money and what your relationship with money is because I think the mo- most of the first time people have access I know it was for me to a lot of money that they didn't have to work for is your student loan yeah and that's like oh wow I've just been given loads of money but then you realize quite quickly um that it's not a lot of money <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. yeah it's like you say you know you've got to spend time you know learning your boundaries and I would definitely agree as well people are very reluctant to invest in themselves Um, I would just recommend you know get a book about money Um, you're not rich you're pretty broke has literally saved my life um, and my bank account (laughs) yeah I don't know if you'd recommend any Uh, that's a really good example and I think um, I I think with money in particular I always feel a bit reluctant to um, you know to to, to talk about you know what are the things that have worked for me versus other people and I'm fully kind of acknowledge the fact that I, I, I'm fairly privileged in that. Um, obviously, uh, have, have had parents who who were able to support me to some extent. Like it was, it wasn't always kind of uh, sunshine and rainbows uh, for us at home. But but it, I was definitely in a, a financially secure position by the time I'd uh, I'd left university. So so I had that um, to to help me. But but I think my parents were always very very good with money. Um, so they they taught me how to to value money. And I think that's one thing that um, that you, it's quite important to put yourself in different scenarios where you you yourself just need to understand the the importance of you know making different decisions so you know forcing yourself to have budgets and that there are lots of um really really good um budgeting apps that all these uh fintechs that, that are launching left right and center you've got revolut you've got monzo um all these different players that um that, that are trying to um to, to fill that gap of teaching you to be better at managing your money um, so, so give those a go, like force yourself to have some restrictions, see how you fare. Um, and, and yeah, and kind of go from there. There's, there's definitely different books you can read uh, and different podcasts you can listen to. But, but I think money can often be quite a, quite a personal thing. Like obviously people don't like to talk about it a huge amount. I think that's, that should really change. I think it's really important to talk about things like 
you know um, how much you, you think you should be saving for, for your future you sh- it's useful to talk about your salary it's useful to to remove that kind of lack of transparency um in uh, in kind of negotiating salaries and, and things like that um but yeah i, I always feel a bit, a bit tricky kind of advising people with, with money definitely yeah it's definitely a taboo sort of topic and it can be like quite hard because obviously everyone has different um privileges i was lucky my parents also helped me a bit at uni so it is quite hard to advise things and um, people on certain things on it because everyone's situation is so personal. I would definitely agree. But I think at the core of it, education is really important with money. And, you know, I think all your kind of advice to sort of learn about it is really helpful to a lot of people. Yeah, that, that's, that's useful to, to hear. And, and I think um, for, for some people, it is completely okay to prioritise money, right? So for some people that's really what gets them out of bed in the morning they they want a career that's perhaps prestigious and uh and and you're going to earn a great salary uh with that and you shouldn't feel um kind of you know uh, embarrassed or nervous about talking about that that's completely fine to have that as your priority um but but i think there are just so many other things that that you should consider alongside money right so um and i, I think this idea of just understanding what is a priority for you is really important and and it's as true as it is uh for kind of work and, and money as it is just outside of work and, and your life and and i think um like for example every, a lot of people talk about or, or when i suppose when you when you're asking people you know do you want to go out for a drink tonight or do you want to do um oh, get, whatever go, go play golf over the weekend um perhaps uh the response you get is oh i'm sorry i can't make it i haven't got enough time for that um those kind of responses are that, that, that's an active choice right you're, you're choosing not to prioritize those things and, and that's that's completely okay right let's say in in those scenarios you're, you're choosing to spend that time to, to learn to better yourself or, or just to relax on your own every single day we we make these small priorities we make these decisions in, in our lives um it's okay for one person to, to care more about money it's okay for one person to just want to enjoy and relax and uh and end up you know for aiming for that four four days a week um working or, or less or or something like that so I think it's being honest with yourself uh and uh and yeah knowing what, what matters most to that's you. really brilliant as well I think it is important to say you know it's totally okay if money is what motivates you I know um I know a few yeah. people that I've interviewed have been like um yeah money what money is what motivates me and that's totally okay everyone has different levels of motivation and I really get a good sense as well that you you seem like one of those people who you're really good at reflecting on yourself <laughs> you know you've taken the time to think about <laughs> stuff when because really what you're saying a lot of what you're saying it doesn't cost any money really it's just like taking the time to think yeah it's, it's interesting that, that you say that um so so I definitely think that's uh when when you've kind of you go through these these, these uh experiences let's say kind of like re- re- launching a startup there are there are so many different things that you learn from from that experience um, it is so important to, to reflect and, and the amount of times I've been asked the question or like in interviews or, or just in passing kind of what are the 10 things you did wrong what what, what would you have done differently if I, if I don't have an answer to, to a question like that that obviously I spent years of my life trying to build this business um, and if I don't know what are the 10 things that, that I that I did wrong then uh, you know I'll probably embarrass myself I should really be thinking harder and reflecting on on what is such a life-changing experience um, and and I think that's you know it's just as important um or like yeah like I said in in your life so outside of work and um, thinking back on the things that you've done what have you enjoyed setting yourself um you know lists like bucket lists of what are the things you want to go after and at the end of the year reflecting like did I, did I achieve those did I not what, what do I want to do differently next year and and for me that 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 works um uh I I like structure to to my life I like structure to my work that's probably the fallout of me being uh, studying economics but um but you know everyone's different some people like to fluidly go through life and pick up different things along the way again that's that's completely okay yeah it's good as well how you mentioned you know this doesn't just apply to anyone who wants to learn, like launch a company or anything you know these are types of things you know you can incorporate outside of your work um and just you know setting yourself like whether it's like you want to travel to at least one country in one year or you want to go to like some concerts or something like just putting yourself out there and actually prioritizing the things you care about and the experiences you love it can really increase your quality of life yeah yeah you're absolutely right um yeah and I definitely think more people should just spend on thinking about that brilliant and um so 
is there any sort of like other challenges um because you obviously like you don't work at your staff anymore it um ended how like how was that for you yeah it's, that's a, that's also a really good question um so so I think it, it was it was a strange one right in that um when when we decided to uh, to close the business uh it felt right for all of us as the three co-founders and and kind of the different uh, freelancers that, that we were working with at the time to to kind of the, to do the translation it, it felt like the right time it felt like um, we pushed it as hard as we we could do um and a few things didn't go our way um and like some of those were, were financial so spent a bit of time trying to see if uh, if we could get investment spent a bit of time uh, trying to get some you know some big clients on board which would have definitely made a difference um and and a few things just not going your way um can can definitely add up and i think what lots of um founders when either if you're successful if you're unsuccessful i think what a lot of people reflect on is um is it so important to 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 know to know when it's the right time to to end it um often you'll find that people spend too long and they're kind of like it becomes a passion project and you've put so much time into it uh, that you just need to continue and you need to make it successful um but i think uh, we were f- really fortunate to just to accept that this was a sunk cost right we'd spent years on it um it could not have been better in terms of uh, something to put on my cv and the different experiences i got it absolutely solidified me in for, for me the, the things that i i enjoy in uh, in, in work um and also what, what it helped me to do is what well, it, it definitely helped me to, to land the job that i got just after that and that helped me to land the job just after that and and i'm only here now because of I, I i definitely look back on that as as a success ultimately we you know we failed as a business but um it was a success in terms of the experience that that it gave us like it's definitely interesting how you define success because it is very personal and i think it's so important to have those sort of moments where you widen your definition and you think okay maybe this failed in this aspect but actually it's a su- total success in terms of like x y and z yeah, you're absolutely right, and and I think probably the biggest success that I, that I took from that was um, was was yeah, like I said, it's it's knowing exactly what I wanted to do next, um, and and for me that was you know I, there were there were a very very small subset of startups that I then really knew that I wanted to work for, and I knew the kind of roles that I wanted to go into, um, and 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 kind of what that trajectory would then look like, and and kind of a lot of people spend time or or, or I've heard uh, people talk about. Um, this idea of kind of trying to, when, you, when you're thinking about your career, trying to find the middle ground between, you know, what are the things that you're interested in? Uh, what are the things that you are uniquely good at or like, yeah, you, you perhaps better than the next next person at that? Um, and where are you actually kind of contributing? Where are you adding value? And and it's those kind of lessons that, that you take after reflecting on such a big decision to, to you know, to end the business. It almost feels like you're you know, cutting off on your limbs after, after spending years years being involved in that. Um, but yeah, it just gave me that clear direction. It gave me uh, that you know, sense of purpose. I knew exactly what I wanted to, to, do, to do next. Yeah, I think it's one of those things where it's quite often you don't actually know like what a job is like until you actually do it. And you're actually there doing it every day. Like you don't actually know what you enjoy. And I mean, I remember like there was a period of time where I was like, oh, I want to be um, a patent um, a patent lawyer. And then I realized I hated chemistry or I want to be a museum person. (laughs) And I think it's so hard to know what these all jobs entail until you try them. And that's why this whole idea of the fact that you just choose a career and that's what you do really doesn't work. Yeah, completely. That's absolutely spot on. And and I think it it, it definitely kind of stems back to exactly as you said, when we're younger and and kind of you're asked what you want to do, what you want to be. And, And the answers that you give are... Or just like for example when you're a child and you say i want to be a police officer or or I, like i said i want to work in a museum or something like that the answers that you give are based on a very very small pool of jobs that you actually know about um so when you answer that as a child it's just things that you've seen in your day to day and and i think what people forget is is that that still applies um kind of five ten years on so what i found is like you know going to university um speaking to the career services uh the, the set of roles that I was shown or that I knew about, like I said, were, were banking, were consulting, were a few different things in between. Um, um, but but I can I can definitely bet you that if I were to go up the road, um, going to you know the careers talks by let's say English literature, something like that, that the, the options that they would have been told were completely different to, to the ones that I was shown. 
um, startups, which I've obviously spent the, the you know most of my, my career working in now, um, were, were not even mentioned. Um, and yeah, and, and I guess kind of what what that, and especially now thinking about when you're looking for a job in in a global pandemic, I, I think what what's really important is just to try and broad, broaden that set of uh, set of opportunities, set of options available to you. And and if you don't love it, just you know keep on looking, keep on moving. Um, and 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 th- there's kind of a, probably a bit of a shout out as well to to people perhaps like me or similar to me who are very very fortunate enough to be on that path uh, in in the types of work that they really enjoy doing. And, and I can definitely, I feel so lucky to be able to say that I absolutely love my job. Um, and I think the the onus now more than ever is perhaps on people like me or people similar to me um, to talk about your industry, talk about your role, be honest about the good and the bad, um, and uh, and you know encourage people who are, are, are going into the, the harshest uh, environment for for finding a graduate job um, that you know has has been the case for for years, and that's because of this pandemic. Um, so. so People, you know, it's, it's useful to, to tell people what's out there because without people that have experienced, the, you know, those experiences that have had those roles, without those people going out and explaining what you do, like I said before, that what is marketing? You know, I didn't have a clue five years ago, but I've spent the last five years basically working in marketing in some way, shape, or form. Um, and yeah, and I think that's it's a, bit, a bit of a passion project for me. And I think there are there are some really good examples of, of organizations or, or people that are going out there and, and talking about their job. Um, uh, or talking about the different set of opportunities that are available to uh, to, to recent graduates, and, and I think yeah, it's probably now more important now more more than ever to 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 be aware of the different options in front of you. I couldn't agree with you more, and I think it's so important, you know, to investigate those options because even if you find that you don't actually enjoy it, or like you might listen to one of these episodes and think, okay, I definitely don't want to do the job that she or he is doing. But you take away like something little, like a lesson they've learned or something that can be applied to so much. I think a lot of people, you sort of like, oh, I don't know what I want to do. So I'm not going to like look at this career talk or read this article because I know, you know, I don't know if I want to do that. But that's exactly how you find out what you want to do is just by absorbing as much information and experience as possible. Yeah, definitely. And and look, if if you end up being the kind of person that, that walks into to the job on day one that you absolutely love, then you are, you know, one of the luckiest people out there. Um, but, but exactly as you said, kind of there, there are so many different facets to, to, to a job, right? There's, you might like the people, you might like the industry, uh, you might like the, um, you know, the, the types of tasks that you do. Every single new role that you take on, you're, you're, you're getting closer to, to finding the thing that you love. Um, and, and I think weirdly, it's, it's almost taboo nowadays to, to, to say that you don't enjoy your job when you don't enjoy your job, right? So when everyone, you know, go get to anyone in the street, um, ask them, you know, how much do you love your job? Do you love your job? Do you, do you like your job? I can promise you now that that 99% of responses will be like, yeah, kind of, I guess, I quite like it. You know, it's all right. Um, and if you dig a bit deeper, there, you know, there, there are things about that job that people do not like. So be honest, be honest to yourself, be honest to different people around you. Um, if you don't like it, move, try and move. And, and you know, this it feels a bit brutal kind of saying this now in, Again, going back to you know the harshest uh, uh, environment for for finding a job uh, for for decades, um, tr- try to find the different things that you love, and it, it might be it might mean staying in a job that you you know that's an eight out of ten, um, but you do something on the side like creating a podcast or or, or creating a, a community of of people that that enjoy something and and turn that into something that's a bit more than um, than, than a few friends gathering, and, and you will learn from those experiences as well as uh, the experiences of, of work. That's so brilliant. And thank you so much as well for, you know, giving such great advice today. So I just want to give you a chance now before we go to sort of give that piece of advice that you would give to anyone who is, you know, in particularly in this really harsh environment, you know, feeling like they're in a bit of a slump. Maybe they've gotten way too many job projections or they just can't, you know, handle like the whole situation because it is really tough, you know. What would you say to anyone who's feeling a bit like that now? Yeah, it's, it's such a tough question, um, and and I, I hope I can I can say something that's, that's at least a bit useful for people that are going through um, t- tough times because because I think so. Yeah, I, I think it's really important to to brace yourself. You know, if you're if you're just leaving university, um, if you're uh, you're still at university and you're trying to find experience, um, you're probably not going to walk into your dream job on day one. And that's completely okay. Uh, so I think what's really useful to, to keep in the back of your mind is 
is, is always be thinking about um, the, the thread, right, in, in your career that brings everything together. Um, and, uh, and, and so for me, for example, I, it didn't really make sense to me, the different types of jobs that I did. It didn't fully, the, the picture of the different roles that I had didn't all come together in, until a few years in. And, and, and now I'm super clear when I go in, into an interview or I go to speaking to different people, I know what, what I can bring to a role. And, and it's generally the same every time. Um, but, but I think what's really important when, you, when you're in those first few roles is be thinking about what's unique to you. Why should someone hire you? Why should someone work with you? And, and what, are you, what are you really interested in? Um, and, and just do not be afraid to, to jump from job to job. That I really, I, I'm never going to be the kind of person that, that when, when looking at someone's CV, I see a few, job, uh, a few jumps in, in their jobs. Um, I'm never going to look, look poorly on that. And, and as long as they, they have a strong explanation for why they're making these jumps, if anything, for me, that that's shows conviction. That that's really positive. It's you know you going for what you really want to do. Um, so so yeah, I think there's there's that, and and I think the thing to keep in mind as well is is if you're if you're kind of consistently authentic um, in the choices that you're making. Right. So going back to what we were talking about before about priorities. Um, if what matters more to you than anything else is uh, is enjoyment in your role, um, then then continuously jumping from job to job. Um, getting closer to the thing that you really, really enjoy. Um, when you look back five years later, there will be a clear story that you can tell. There'll be a clear path for how you got to where you got to. Um, and, you know, exactly the same. If it's learning that you're looking for, those, those learnings will build up and you'll have a unique um, unique story that you can tell. So, so as long as it makes sense to you um, while you've jumped from job to job, um, you can make it make sense to, to other people. And I think that's probably the first thing that I'd say that it's really, you know, really useful to, to keep in the back of your head. Um, but yeah, I suppose on, on top of that, I think, I think it's really important and, um, rightly and really thankfully, a lot more people are talking about, you know, the likes of, of mental health. And, uh, and I think as a society, let's, let's be pretty honest that for, for a lot of people right now, and especially in the next year, like t- as of, you know, as of today, uh, we've just gone back into, uh, into recession. Um, that's not fantastic news for anyone, but that's particularly not fantastic news for for people that are perhaps already struggling with with anxiety and and are now just going through a really crowded um, uh, um, you know work 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 arena. And uh, so I think it's really important um, for for everyone just to, to 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 try and this is really tough, but to, to try and be conscious of you know are, are you just finding it a little bit tough right now or or are you actually, is there something more? Are you feeling you know, not 100% for, for reasons that you can't quite explain? And if that's the case, you know, be, be super honest if you can, be open about it, talk to different people. Um, you know, I, I feel really, uh, really um, uh, sympathetic for the people that are, that are looking for, for jobs right now. It's, it's, like I said, probably too many times, it's, it's going to be really tough. Um, but, but importantly, kind of look to the people around you, look for help, look for support, and and probably more than anything, look, look for professionals too. If it's, if it's a, you know, there's something that you really are struggling with um, and you, you know, may well have an illness um, and treat it like one and speak to, to professionals. Um, but, but I think on top of that as well, there's, there's definitely things you can do yourself to, to, to be feeling a bit more positive. Um, like myself, just taking, taking small steps, like uh, um, look, for example, looking at my, my Instagram feed, um, who should I follow? Who should I unfollow? Like if you, you know, if you had a really tough day at work and, and you look at, um, this Instagram feed full of you know people absolutely living their best lives or, or presumably living their best lives. You can only really assume um, that's nothing. That's probably not necessarily going to going to help you. Um, so so yeah, I, I think trying to if you know you're going through a tough period, uh, try to reflect. And this is probably the theme that, that we've talked about quite a lot. But but trying to reflect on the things that are going well, things that are not going so well. And and again, kind of as you know, you said a bunch of times, Katie. Um, it definitely does get better in the long run. So so hold out. Thank you so much, Tom, for being on today's episode. And I hope everyone enjoyed it. Please share this podcast with all your friends and follow us on Instagram at Hey It Gets Better. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, then I'd really appreciate if you could rate the podcast and give it a review. It means so much to me when I get good feedback for this podcast and it also means it will be easier for other people to find it. I hope you guys have a 